Hi guys, Michael Jensen here. Uh, today we got kind of a fly tying special. We got our friend John in the house, and uh, we're gonna try some of Grant's nymphs. Um, those special stonefly nymphs with uh, interesting weaving technique for the haggle and um, John is a master of tying these things uh, I wouldn't know how to do it so um, he's a stunt tie today first thing we're gonna do is tie this the copy of this original grand fly the black and tan feather back okay that's all for now let's get on with the tying Okay guys, just for the record, today I'm behind the camera and John is in front of it. First step is preparation for the haggle. John uses a large bunch of elk body hair. He comes out the short underfur. Then he stacks the buns first time. He even out the butt ends over the dustbin, slightly out of the picture frame, I'm sorry. Then he stacks again. A bit of flat tying cement is added to the little yellow cup. He pulls out the bunch from the stagger and separate a small bunch of five to seven hairs. The butt ends are dipped in the cement and lay it down to dry in the special wooden rack. The glued part will be cut off later and only serves the purpose of keeping the tips aligned until the weaving technique locks everything in place. Then it's just repeating the same process. You need enough of these sets to make a dense haggle. How many is needed depends on the thickness of the individual hair, which can vary a bit. Grant, who used several different kinds of hair, including the synthetic Tynex, states 15 individual bunches. John finds that using elk body hair he often needs as many as 20 to 25 bunches to match the look of Grant's originals. Then he follows the instruction in Grant's book for setting up two vices for the weaving process. Note that the two separate strands of tying thread are knotted together a couple of inches from the main vise. And this is what it looks like in real life.
Again, make sure the loop is not twisted. Then he takes his haggle pliers and grab a bunch of hair by the tips. The haggle plier is equipped with small markings for the two different hook sizes needed to tie grand stone flies. He moistens the hair to make them more pliable. Then he starts weaving. The hair goes through the loop. The haggle ply goes up and touches the thread to make sure the haggle gets the correct length. Then the bunch go around both threads through the loop again and is tied off with a knot around both threads. Then everything is tightened up and the first bunch is in place. This is what it looks like in Grant's illustration. Repeat this process around 20 to 25 times. Let's speed up that task. Then the weaving is done. John cuts off the thread and make a knot tight up against the front end of the haggle to keep everything in place. Then the haggle is put aside while he ties the body. John has an Arex HR418 size one in the vise and starts to prepare the pheasant shoulder feather also known as church windows again he uses the flexible flat tying cement coating and stroking the feather to glue the fibers together while making the feather slimmer and more robust Then he secures the tying threads and tie in the tails. These are taken from a synthetic floor scrubbing brush. Cuts out surplus material. Mm -hmm. 
and makes a small thread winding and half hitches. Then he cuts off the tying silk and coat the winding. While the tying cement dries, he prepares the body material, making a tapered cut for tying in. Now a stronger white thread is secured. He ties in the body material. Then he winds the thread all the way up the shank to the point where the loop eye of the hook starts. Then he measures the body length against the small pin that's going to be tied in later. A string of white wool yarn is tied in and a tapered body is built up. He attaches a small pin or needle to each side of the body. They add a bit of weight and help to build the flattened broad body profile. The tying thread should be strong enough to bend these metal pins in shape, curving along the body. Then he tie in the yellow floss silk. And cover the body all the way back to the tail and forward again. He does a final trimming of the now cured pheasant feather that is going to cover the back of the nymph. The white thread is used 
temporary hold the back feather in position. and gradually backs off while the body material is brought forward. Then the materials outside of After a whip finish, the white thread is cut away. Then the whole body is soaked in lacquer, which makes the semi-transparent material glassy transparent. Then the body is left to dry. After a bit of cleaning up, John reintroduced the yellow Purcell's gossamer silk thread. The hackle is secured and he builds a thread foundation before winding forward. While winding the hackle, he makes sure to pull back all fibers between each winding. When the hackle is secured, the head is built up. A whip finish is made and the thread is cut away. Drop a flagger on the head of the fly and it's finished. That's all. Let's do it guys. Easy peasy. Or not. Okay guys, the black and tan feather back. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.